Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 g'day, curd nerds, and welcome to Ask the Cheese Man. This is where you can ask your home cheese making questions. Welcome to episode 191. We're so close to 200. It's not funny. So that's nine weeks' time, I suppose. So then we're doing one a week. Um, and there'll be a, su a special surprise on the 200th episode. Uh, some people may have alluded to it already and figured it out, but. It will be a special episode, obviously, on the 200th. Okay, um, I'll introduce myself, I suppose. I'm Gavin Webber. I'm the um, Chief Curd Nerd, and hopefully we'll be able to answer some of your questions. Don't forget that we're also streaming on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Uh, just search for Gavin Webber, and you should be able to find it somewhere. Okay, let's have a look at the chat and see who's here. I think we've got a few people already which is fantastic. Um, shout out to, well, Kim's moderating today. So thank you, Kim, over in YouTube. Um, we've got Herb. G'day, Herb. Woody. We've got Bart. We've got uh, Liana. We've got Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Heidi. Uh, Cease. G'day, Cease. Love to see you. Patricia. Uh, Fun Pants 94 Always cracks me up. G'day, mate. How are you? Uh, Adam, hello, mate. How are you? I think we've got a few before that. We've got Annette. G'day, Annette. Uh, Robert. G'day, Robert. And who's the other person? Rave. G'day, Rave. Lovely to see you. Oh, we've got some more people coming in there. We've got La from Trinidad. Lovely to see you. Okay. Um, and who else? We've got Harsh and we've got Wendy. Oh, nice. All right. So before we start, um, I'd like to thank uh the financial members of the channel uh both on youtube members and patreon and specifically today new members sean mahoney thank you uh sean for your financial support and tegan comroy over on patreon thank you tegan uh and all members and patrons get early access to the uh how to make videos and some behind the scenes stuff and they also on well on patreon uh, get perks for each tier. I'm thinking of implementing the same sort of tiers on uh, on YouTube. You can do that now. I've only just found that out. So I may do a tier system on YouTube as well um, to make it exactly the same as uh, Patreon. So people can choose which platform they want to support me on if they want to. Um, don't forget, you probably figured it out already that there's a daylight savings change. Um, we had one two weekends, two weekends, last weekend, last weekend was daylight savings change for us. We went an hour spring forward, forward. No, what is it? Yeah. Spring, spring. Uh, so yeah, we sprung forward an hour and, uh, I think a lot of the, all the Northern hemisphere, whoever has daylight savings, We'll go back an hour soon, that's for sure. Okay. <clears throat> um, what else? Ah, oh, yes, there'll be... I finished off the final touches on the truffle cheese video, finally. Um, and that uh, will be released uh, tomorrow. Uh, so uh, watch out for that. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's a very interesting cheese. A lot of things... Didn't go quite right, but a lot of things at the end did go right, if that makes sense. So, yeah, it was fantastic. Um, okay. Um, so, um, in the planning stage, new videos will be uh, Gorgonzola. I'm going to try my hand at that. I found a recipe. Um, and Triple Cream, which is very similar to some, um, some French-style Triple Cream cheeses. Uh, with white mold, so that should be interesting. Um, also on the vlog channel, you just search on YouTube for Gavin Webber Vlogs. There'll be a few more um, videos coming out there as well if you want to see behind the scenes what we do here on a you know weekly basis. I'll do a weekly vlog that's um, 
uh, that's been posted. So, yeah, so we've got some exciting stuff going on there as well. All righty, um, time for questions, I think. And let's see, who is the first question? Um, bah, bah, bah. And, of course, Patricia has pointed out that hello from uh, Halifax and Canada looks like Australia has sprung ahead. Yes, indeed. We've now, instead of having three time zones here in Australia, we've now got five time zones. So New South Wales and Victoria, where I live, um, have daylight savings. South Australia has daylight savings. But all the other states have... Oh, and Tasmania has daylight savings. Yes. Uh, all the other states and territories decide that they don't want to do it uh, because they're too far north. So it kind of wrecks everything. So that's fine. Uh, it all works. Okay. So, yes. So that's uh, that's why some places have different time zones in Australia. We're actually now three hours ahead of Western Australia. Okay. Uh, Funpants94 says, watching these live is the highlight of my week, Gavin. Just don't tell my wife who is also watching. <laughs> yeah, mate, keep it a secret. Okay. Um, uh, Carlos, g'day, mate. And we've got Charlie. I think that's how you say it. Uh, Adam says... Do you have any videos on using stackable molds? Uh, let me think. I do have a, a video on cheese baskets, but I don't have any on stackable molds per se, as in stackable baskets, cheese baskets. Um, so, um, Kim, I don't know what you. I know you're um, you've, you're looking after a couple of friends down there. Uh, can you see if you can find the uh, cheese basket and mould video and put the link up for Adam? Uh, and he'll show, uh, and that'll show you, Adam, all of the um, uh, the baskets that I, well, I owned about two years ago. Or I've got a few more since then. Um, James says, I finally managed to catch the show live in the UK. Yes, I think it's uh, the time zones are more conducive now. It's a little bit earlier for the UK, which is good. Um, Liana says, I like the earlier time. We joked, uh, we joked that you're my Saturday night date, but, but now my boyfriend can take me on a date too. Very nice. Uh, yeah, until you change to daylight savings then it'll all be even, well, it'll be even earlier, I suppose. Um, uh, what have we got? Uh, the, um, Harsh says, I still don't understand the role of hydrogen ion in cheese making. Could you shade some light on it? I'm a learning professional cheese maker in Canada. You're probably one step ahead of me there, Harsh. Um, the role of the hydrogen ion in cheese making. Um, I haven't come, I know it's there. I haven't come across it yet. Um, so, as far as I think you mean pH or potential hydrogen. Uh, pH, the acidity of the milk and the curds, uh, play a big part in cheese making. If the cheese is too acidic, it usually becomes crumbly or it becomes uh, sometimes not bitter to taste, but too sharp. The sharp, the more acidic the cheese, the sharper it is. Uh, in the case of uh, semi-hard and hard cheeses, the more acidic the cheese is, the crumblier it becomes, the less acidic the less crumblier it becomes uh, and it's more smoother. That's why you'll see uh, washed curd cheeses like uh, Budakeza and Havati and Edam and Gouda, or Gouda. Um, those sorts of cheeses have uh, a low pH because the curds are washed during the process with water. They, we replace some of the whey with, um, with water and that cuts down the amount of lactose that's available for the uh, for the uh, lactobacteria to to eat, so yes, uh, pH or potential hydrogen uh, of the milk has a big part to play in cheese making. Hopefully, that's from my layman's terms. If you proceed on the course, you should learn a lot more about pH because they really do hammer that home in um, in proper cheese making courses well not proper cheese making courses in uh, commercial cheese making courses because if you want to replicate the same cheese over and over and over 
uh, to the customer's palate so they understand that when they buy a cheese um, in six months' time, it's going to be exactly the same, uh, then that's what you'll need to know. You'll know, need to know the pH of the milk and the curds at all stages. Um, got a question from Liana says, my Budokaser is not drying, but rather getting slimier and mushier. It's in a maturation box on a mat covered in a cheesecloth. Thoughts? Yeah, the Budokaser does go tacky. Um, and the reason behind that is uh, wild yeast, usually, usually. Um, but yeah, it, uh, it will dry out eventually, but if it does, it'll tend to crack which is why I usually then after about two or three weeks, I will vacuum pack uh, the Budokaser Liana. So uh, give it its uh, final wipe and then either wax or, or a vacuum pack it. Uh, and then it'll mature perfectly. It'll be fine. Um, Annette says something very controversial to a lot of Queenslanders. We need daylight savings here in Queensland. You probably do, but those in far north Queensland would probably um, uh, uh, probably disagree with you uh, because they're close to the equator. Uh, Julia says, good morning from New Zealand. We are still two hours ahead of you. Looks like you've changed to daylight savings time as well. Thank you, Julia. Um, Rave says, would you ever do a collaboration with the Townsend's channel on an 18th century cheese? I would love to see you two together. Um, yeah, look, I think um, uh, Jazz Towson is a pretty cool guy. I love all of his recreations. But he's actually done um, 18th century um, American cheese. He's done a video of it already. So you can go and search on his channel. Uh, and they're pretty, pretty in-depth um into the descriptions of the types of cheese they would have had in the 18th century so go and check out his channel rave um i'd love to do a collab with him but being in australia and him being in the uh the east coast of the us it would be quite difficult i would think uh lena says hello just a quick question my halloumi never floated it sank what could have gone wrong um much love thanks a million uh depends on the type of milk you use lena um if you use raw milk usually it'll float every single time uh if it's got too much whey in it it tends to sink as well uh if you haven't expelled enough and the ch and the curds aren't dry enough after that you know pressing between the two boards uh that happens sometimes as well uh but they're the only two things i can really think of why it would not float uh, Robert says, um, I hope you and Kim are well. I hope to make some sage derby and some Shropshire blue this week. My dad liked the Shropshire uh, blue so much that he took all of it with him when he left. Uh, fantastic. Well, the recipes work all right. Now, um, with the sage derby, if you want it a little bit greener, um, what you can do when you add the sage water to the curds, uh, before pressing, add some spinach juice as well. So warm a little bit of spinach juice up um, just so it's room temperature, not straight out of the fridge. And you'll find that adds a really uh, vibrant green colour to it. Uh, I've been told that that's what commercial cheesemakers done. I've, I've done it. Uh, I didn't take any photos of it, but it looks a lot better than what uh, just using the sage alone, which is a really light green colour. I think they try and... Um, Make it a make it as a a a, a, a striking um, uh, a strike a striking example of a, a very green cheese by doing that. Okay, um, Harsh says, any words on flocculate? What is flocculation? Indeed, I've done a full video on flocculation. Uh, Kim has already put the link up for you, Harsh, and hopefully you've got that. Um, FunPants94 says, I made a Budokaser uh, that I've soaked in wine and it's currently aging. How do you think this will impact the aging currently vac sealed? Oh, look, I think it'll be fine. Um, it may be a little bit moister than normal. However, wine, because of the alcohol, will tend to dry it out a little bit. Um, yeah, I think it'll be fine. It won't upset the lactic bacteria if that's what you're trying to get at. So it'll be fine. Um, 
Rob says, um, howdy, Gavin, been a long-time fan. What would be a fun and easy cheese that you could make in an apartment for a beginner? Um, Rob, I think Kim's just put up the beginner's list, a uh, beginner's cheese list link with uh, with no cheese cave. So go and check that out and you will uh, be enlightened. Um, I'd start off with uh, ricotta, paneer, halloumi, feta, uh, and then move on to, oh, what's a good one? Uh, Bel Paese, I think that's in the list as well. Um, and then move on to other cheeses and then experiment. Um, okay. Um, Liana says, my Boudicca's are still at room temperature stage, three days out of the brine. Uh, just keep waiting or put it in the cave. Um, okay, so that's probably why it's going tacky because at room temperature it will attract uh, the different type of yeasts. Uh, that's fine. Sli slimy, tacky, same sort of thing. Um, yeah, pop it in the cheese cave now. Um, uh, it won't probably dry out any further. But, uh, yeah, so put it in its wrap and there you go. Uh, not wrap, you know, the um, uh, vacuum packing. Right. Um, Kim is really on point with the um, the links today, which is fantastic. Um, Robert says, maybe Townsend's could be a guest on your next 12-hour mega stream. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Um, but seeing I only interview specific cheesemakers, he's not the cheesemaker per se, if that makes sense. So I don't know what sort of value we get out of um having jazz on there um uh yeah i'll give it some thought but um yeah it'd be cool uh patricia says that townsend's 18th century cheese video is good uh it helped me get interested in home cheese making yeah indeed i i really enjoyed that video that he put out as well um uh Ugu says uh, is it unhealthy to eat blue cheese every day for breakfast? Greetings from Germany. Indeed, it is not. The Penicillium Rogue 40 is perfectly fine. You can eat it as many times as you like, except the maybe the fat content will be a little bit high. So, um, yeah, anyway. Um, so go and check that out. Uh, you can You can eat as much blue as you like. I would. It's very nice. Uh, there's so many different styles of blue cheese. You have a different flavour every day. Um, Rav said, uh, what was your worst cheese, the one that didn't turn out uh, how you wanted it to? Oh, goodness me. I think the viewers would probably know better than I would. Um, I have had a few disasters, but I actually have a list of disasters and how I recovered from them. Kim, if you can find the When Cheese Fails video and put that up for Rav, and uh, you'll see some amazingly uh, early, uh, not mistakes, but early disasters, I suppose, all of which I recovered from. So, um, uh, Sadie says, um, hope Kim is doing well. Um, she was feeling a little bit unwell before we started, but hopefully she's okay now. Um, how does vacuum packing affect maturation time? Uh, well, it's exactly the same as waxing a cheese. So it doesn't affect maturation time per se. It holds in more moisture uh, into the cheese uh, than if you didn't vacuum pack or wax it. So the cheese doesn't tend to dry out as much. So it stays moist uh, as it was when you put it into the bag. Many, many commercial cheesemakers use plastic vacuum packing to mature their cheese in, case in point, large cheddar factories, uh, not traditional cheddar, but, you know, the, the commercial blocks of cheddar you buy in the supermarket. They are all matured under plastic. So it doesn't affect the cheese whatsoever. Okay. Um, uh, aura? aura? I think that's how you say it. Um, hi, Mr. Weber. Greeting from Wales in the United Kingdom. Uh, I've been there. It's a lovely place. Very hilly. Uh, do you have a recipe to make old Amsterdam cheese? Uh, no, I don't. Um, but I'll check it out. 
Um, there are new recipes appearing over on um, cheesemaking.com quite often that I sometimes use uh, that aren't in any books. So I will go and check that out. But thanks, Aura. Um, uh, Liana says, after wiping cheese with brine during the aging process, should it be dried before going back in the box? My Emmentaler is almost overrun with mold as it ages at room temperature. Um, as it dries out, the mold should uh, decrease. It shouldn't get any worse. Um, that's the good thing about um, those sort of cheeses. It really should not be getting any more, I suppose, what, what I'm looking for is the word is wet mold, I suppose. Dry powdered mold, yeah, sure, no big deal. We just wipe that off. Um, and a lot of uh, cheese making producers when they do mature their cheese on pine boards, but you find that it tends to get a powdery mold on the outside and they just brush it off with a dry cloth. Uh, not so much brine it if, if it's a humidity controlled aging area. Um, uh, yeah, if you've, um, if you've, um, every time you wipe a cheese with brine, it doesn't matter. It, it goes back in the box. The, the brine is supposed to keep some of the mold at bay um especially when you're making um uh washed rind cheeses like you know limburger and uh, brick cheese and port salut and stuff like that uh they're supposed to feel a little bit tacky that's how the red mold grows on the outside however with normal cheeses like i think you're referring to budakaza which you mentioned before liana um no they don't need to be dried uh before going back into the box it but if you're getting mold build up and you're using the brine to get rid of the mold, then you look, you can pat the surface down with a paper towel and that will help keep some of the mold at bay. However, uh, if it becomes too much of a problem and you really just can't get rid of it, give it a quick wipe with the brine, pat it with paper towel and then vacuum pack it and go from there. Okay. Um, how do I pronounce that? Cane wolf. I think that's how you say it. I like blue cheese, but only the white parts, not the veins. <laughs> uh, suggestions on uh, other cheese to try. Uh, uh, all of them. Try them all. There you go. There's, I know it's probably not what you're after, but that's I would get. just buy little pieces of cheese. Try them. If you don't like them, give them to somebody else. All right. Um, Jan says... Uh, I know you're going into spring there, uh, that we're supposed to be going to fall here. So it's time for me to get back into cheese making. My granddaughter is about to clean, just about to clean my cheese cave out. Fantastic. Um, hope you have, oh, sorry, excuse me, what she said. Uh, I meant my great granddaughter. Goodness me, Jan, you're a veteran cheese maker. Well done. Um, Nicola says that. Uh, slept in that's okay nicola no big deal um uh heidi says uh for failure failures i learned about sodium citrate from you we now use the failure cheeses with sodium citrate to make mac and cheese perfect and that is um probably something that's not in the when cheese fails video because i discovered sodium citrate myself probably a few years after that but yeah you can process just about any failed cheese into um, American style oozy cheese or nacho cheese um, by adding sodium citrate to grated up cheese and a little bit of water and bingo boingo, you've got yourself some runny melty cheese. Okay, um, Starshot says, uh, hey Gavin, my previous cheese aged in the fridge around four degrees Celsius and it smelled fine but tasted musky and off. It was cultured with buttermilk and coated with cheese coating. Any ideas on what went wrong? Mm. No, not really. Um, tasted musky. I've never experienced that before. Mm. Cheese being rancid, I have, but that's only because it's uh, matured when it's too warm, not too cold. Don't know. Uh, the cheese coating shouldn't have had any effect at all it's similar to using uh cheese wax a lot in fact a lot of uh artisan cheese makers 
put a PVA coating around it, the the paracoat, and uh, and then wax it as well. But no, sorry, can't help you, mate. Sorry about that. Um, Addy says, sorry, you didn't realise this was live. Sorry, I'm late. That's okay. Uh, Liana says, um, can you describe shattered curds? What caused it and why it is bad? Uh, shattered curds just means that the uh, after you've cut the curds, um, and then you uh, you just give it a, a brief stir, very gently and brief stir, uh, and you don't wait for that five minutes um, healing time, so the curds can, you know, the the cuts can actually heal a little bit. When you stir it, you'll find that the curds, instead of staying in their cube shape, they will split into what looks like scrambled eggs. Um, not the, you know, de not the, the little cubes that you cut them into. So that's shattered curds. It kind of looks sloppy. And then the, the curds kind of tend to mix with the whey and looks like a dog's breakfast. Looks a bit like uh, when you make ricotta, if you've ever made ricotta, Liana. So that's what shattered curds are. That healing, that's why the... Um, that's why the clean break is essential to check that the curd structure is tight enough uh, so that when you do cut it, it doesn't shatter into a thousand trillion billion pieces. Okay. Okay. Um, Addy says, Gav, we bottled up our first bland. It's a little hazy, but tastes great. 16%, just like you said, tastes like Chardonnay with a hint of whey. I'm calling it Chardonnay. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Sorry. <laughs> that was a real laugh out loud. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's really cool, Chardonnay. <laughs> I like it. Thank you, Eddie. Um, and uh, since we opened three different varieties of kefillis that we made, they were all different but good. I need to send you some pictures. Indeed you do. And very, very soon it is time in three minutes for the Cheese Gallery. So great segue. Uh, Mr. Bones says he's in the house. Not in my house, mate, but yep, that's cool. Um, um, and he says, oops, on the wrong account. This is Townsteading. <laughs> there you go. No problems at all. Multiple, um, uh, multiple, multiple um, Google accounts. Um Starshot says, too bad. Maybe it got contaminated or the rant had spoiled. I am clueless. I had two other cheeses fail before that. Have you ever aged cheese at four degrees Celsius? Maybe that could be the issue. Uh, yeah, only certain cheeses I um, uh, I age at four degrees Celsius. Certainly not many. Um, if they're like a cheddar or something like that, I'll, you just do not get the, uh, the lactic bacteria and enzyme de development that you need at say 13 degrees celsius the temperature can make a heck of a lot of difference that's for sure um so yeah try that um four degrees it needs to be higher it, you just won't get the development that you're after the, the the lactic acid and the enzyme development okay um last one before the gallery this one's from liana again uh, I've been using pasteurized milk the last few times, even with a clean break and letting the curds heal, they still shatter. It presses well, uh, cause, and is this a bad thing? Uh, not necessarily. Send me some photos, Liana. I want to have a look at what you think uh, shattered curds are compared to what I think is uh, shattered curds. So um, go to the About tab, um, and I will show people that how to get to... Um, send me an email uh, after the gallery. So, uh, yeah, we can do that. So send me a photo uh, or a couple of photos and uh, we can go from there. All righty. Um, it's nearly time for the gallery, which is fantastic. Uh, let me just get rid of that. Let's find the gallery so I can show you good folks what we're looking at today. Okay, let me just get rid of that and share the screen. And this is going to be fabulous. All righty. Oh, here's the gallery today. Oh, that's not how I do it. Let's do it like that. 
All righty. So first, oh, and my alarm goes off on schedule. That's fantastic. Okay. Um, first cab off the rank today. Uh, where is my little notes? Right. So this is from sent in to me by Annette. Thank you, Annette. Um, so Annette says, um, uh, all right, what she said. Um, thank you for your Yarlsberg recipe. I've included a photo of your Yarlsberg after pressing. All right, we'll get to that in a sec. Turned out really well. I've also included a picture of a Gouda as well as my double brie. Looking forward to creating more wonderful cheeses soon. All righty. Um, take care and best wishes for both you and Kim. Regards, Annette. Thank you, Annette. Um, so this is Annette's uh, double brie. It looks lovely. The paste development looks fantastic. Can we get a close-up of that? Let's have a look. Is the computer going to say yes? And we're not going to get too many pixels. That looks absolutely fantastic. So not too runny around the edges. Hopefully you can see my pointer there. Uh, and the paste looks creamy in the middle. So great job for that one, uh, Annette. Let me have a look at the next photo. Uh, here we go. Um, and this is the Gouda, I think. It looks lovely. Um, looks well developed. Bit of a shadow there. Can't really see, but um, I love the red crackers too. I think they're rice crackers or something like that. Uh, I like the wet white wax. So this is the uh, Yarlsberg before. Um, it's been pressed. And there's the Yarlsberg as it's been waxed. And hopefully, do we have another Yarl? Hey, and there's the Yarlsberg cut open. Let me just go back to that label. I love this little label. People who put labels on their cheese have an extra bit of a passion. So we've got, it says it's uh, ready by August 19th, 2021, which has already happened, obviously. Annette, hashtag curd nerd. Thank you, Annette. Made with love. <laughs> oh, I think it's fabulous. And there it is. There's the Arlsberg in all its glory. That looks absolutely fantastic. Great eye development. And I bet the taste was uh, absolutely to die for. All right. So I think that's all of Annette's photos. Right. So the next one's from Josh. Uh, thank you, Josh. Uh, Josh says, hi, Gavin, another batch of cheese pictures attached for your show if you are in need of more. Mate, I'm always in need of more, that's for sure. Uh, pictures, that is. Um, so the first picture is a Colby says, your recipe backpacked. This cheese is very mild, but still with a nice flavor. It's good on crackers and kids are quite happy to eat it. Uh, eat with it being so mild, a good all-rounder. All Fantastic. That looks like a very nice howder. Uh, Colby, sorry, Colby. Don't know what, pardon me, I don't know why I said gouda. Hang on, let me just have a sip. Mm. Coffee, good. Right, next one is, oh, that looks like a Yarlsberg. So uh, this one says, Yarlsberg, your recipe waxed. Another Weber special. Yarlsberg make. Uh, the eyes with this one were not particularly large as my first Yarlsberg. See the 12 hours of cheese for that picture. Not sure if I prefer the look of the small versus large eyes, but the texture and nutty flavor was spot on again. Wax for six weeks with expansion notable at the end of the four week mark. I think it looks pretty good, mate. I don't know what you're going on about. <laughs> I think that the eyes look fabulous. So... Uh, each of their own. And then um, we've got the next. This is pictures of the Yarlsberg soldiers waiting the uniforms, uh, also known as individual packing for the family. Very nice. Looks like a piece of Yarlsberg out of the, um, you know, the packet you get in the supermarket. So very cool indeed, mate. Uh, next photo is Budakaza, your recipe, vac packed. Uh, this has a pleasant buttery flavor and texture similar to Yarlsberg. Some mechanical holes and a few shiny eyes. Uh, overall, a nice cheese to add to the platter. It looks lovely. I really do like Budakaza. It's a great little discovery I found. And um, it does almost taste like the real deal. I've been told by some uh, German curd nerds who go on the channel and said it tastes almost exactly the same as the stuff they buy in the stores. So, um, 
Josh says at the end, um, hopefully the shop is fully stocked in the next week or so as I am in need of some supplies. Yes, we're having a bit of a supply issue at the moment. Uh, thanks for letting me know. That's the end of the gallery. Uh, thank you, Josh and Annette, for sending those in. If you want to send in pictures to the gallery, let me just show you how to do that. A bit of sharing again. Let's have a look. So um, we go to my YouTube channel. So find Gavin Weber on YouTube. That's me. Uh, and you go to the About tab, just like this. And you go down to Details. Now, you may not get this on mobile. You'll have to do it on desktop. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and it says, for business inquiries, sign in to see email address. Now, if you're already signed in, you'll see that. And there'll be a little capture button or recapture that you have to do. So, uh, yeah, do that. Uh, and then that's the address, the email address you send all of your photos to. So send me your cheese making photos if you want them to appear on the um uh, in the gallery the cheese gallery and uh and i have been using um as you can see um them in thumbnails and i put accreditation where i've used the photograph in the thumbnails so a bit a bit more promotion for home cheese makers as well so that's how we do it that's how you send me um your your pictures Okay, um, hey, just on uh, restocking and that great segue by Josh there. Um, yeah, we're having some trouble. Uh, postage here in Australia has just gone chaotic since um, the two major, most populated states have been in lockdown since God knows when now. Um, so the e any anybody who's got an e-commerce store is either out of stock or struggling to get stock because uh shipping even couriers are having massive delays as well as australia post australia post has actually stopped picking up from businesses twice now uh to get rid of their backlog in their warehouses uh and where it would normally take a week for me to get cheese making supplies from my wholesalers it's new now taking uh at least three sometimes four weeks to get that that, that that stuff so when i sell out as i normally do I, I normally put an order in a week before i sell out of stuff but now i just have to order so far in ahead um and yeah a lot of stock in the cheese making section of the shop is out of stock currently uh unfortunately so terribly sorry about that um we're trying to restock as fast as we can and we've actually had to shut down for two weeks our office and not sending parcels out because we just don't have any stock to give to people. So a uh, bit of a dilemma at the moment. Uh, but we're hoping to have lots of stuff restocked again. Uh, we're trying to get stuff in next week and get it up online. Um, but we won't be shipping again until uh, not the 10th. What is it? The 17th? Uh, the 18th is the first day we're going to start shipping again. So we can actually get some stuff in the shop and send it out. Uh, you can place orders for what's there, but once it's gone, it's gone, and it's taking a long time to get in. So it's a great problem to have, but uh, a bit frustrating when I normally have a, a decent supply of cheese-making supplies. So terribly sorry. Okay, um, moving right along from where we are were before. Um, where are we? Um, Keely says, I think that's how you say it. Thank you, Keely. Says, I've been off with an injury for a while and also lost a few cheeses to a dirt smelling mold that I ended up throwing out. What would you suggest chemical wise to clean out my cheese fridge? Uh, yeah, you've got a couple of options. Uh, what you can do is use just white vinegar in a spray bottle and spray all the surfaces. That'll usually kill off the molds and then give that a good wipe with a, with a cloth. Uh, alternatively, if you want to really get them and kill them good, I uh, use a weak bleach solution. So in two liters of water, add um, 20 milliliters of uh, bleach um, and then uh, mix that up and then use that and then wipe all of the, um, the surfaces with that. You don't need to dry that off because the bleach will evaporate and doesn't leave a residue. So 
Those two will kill the molds and yeasts uh, hiding in your cheese fridge. Get every single surface, though. So pull your racks out, clean them as well. The little slots the racks sit in, everything. So you'll have to be meticulous if you want to kill off that mold. Okay. Um, yeah. This is from Harsh again. So what's the difference between the principal difference between rennet and culture? Well, rennet's an enzyme and cultures are a lactic bacteria. That's the principal um, uh, difference. Uh, rennet coagulates and cultures acidify. Okay. Um, this question is from Chris. It says, hi, Gavin. Any ideas about the weight of your Tilsit recipe? Um, I've made it, but it was way too big for my mould and had to use three smaller moulds. It also got a bit slippery three weeks into washing. Is this normal? Uh, yes, it's in it's a washed rind cheese. Uh, yeah, it'll be a bit slippery and tacky um, as you wash it. That's the Brevi bacteria linens um, uh, red mold starting to do its stuff. That's what it does. It makes it slimy and tacky. Um, Tilsit recipe, uh, if I remember rightly, was made with 10 litres of milk. So I use my 165 uh, millimetre mould, or is that six and a half inches, I think, across the one I sell on my store. We still got some of those in stock, thank goodness. Um, and I think it turned out to be about a kilogram, uh, which is 2.2 pounds. So that was the weight of the curd uh, when I took it out of the mould, if that makes sense. So, Okay. Uh, Annette says, thanks, Gavin. Yes, I'm very passionate about cheese making. Thanks to mainly to your wonderful and instructive videos. Thank you, Annette. Appreciate it. Um, uh, cheese history. Oh, Julia, hello. Lovely to see you online. Hi, Gavin and Kim. Loving the gallery. So many awesome cheeses made by everybody. Indeed, I love to showcase people's cheeses. Uh and Patricia says, that double brie looks spectacular. Good work, Annette. Uh, indeed, it was very good. Um, they made me hungry. All the, che <laughs> the cheese making stuff. Uh, Kim says, cheese for breakfast. I'll have to see if we've got some halloumi. That's a great breakfast cheese. Uh, that's Kim said, cheese for breakfast. Indeed. Uh, oh, good to me. Um, uh Robert says, what's the aging time for Buddha cases? Do I have to make it? Oh, sorry. Do I have time to make it for Thanksgiving? If I remember rightly, I think it's about four weeks. So I don't know when Thanksgiving is. What's that in the last week of November? Oh, yeah, you might be able to squeeze it in. I think it might be six weeks. But, yeah, you should be able to get it done before that. Um, uh let's have a look um and wendy says thank you fellow cheesemakers for great photos of your creations i'm constantly in awe i am too and i get so many photos it's great uh bonnie says uh gav g'day from alabama in usa g'day bonnie um uh, Daily Not Interesting says, what cheeses would you recommend as a first step into aged cheeses? I think my charcuterie fridge will double nicely as a cheese cave. Yes, it will. Um, temperature controlled and humidity controlled. It should be fine. Um, aged cheeses. Try Kefili. Always my go-to cheese for when somebody wants to take the next step past Fresh cheeses. It's got a little bit of cheddaring in it, which is good fun. It's also a very quick aged cheese, only three weeks um, to age it at 13 degrees Celsius. And it tastes fabulous. It really does. Such a great cheese. So, Kefili. And Kim, if you're not too busy with um, uh, your friends up there, can you pop up the link to Kefili, the most recent one? Um. Uh, Camp Creek Hill says Australia Post is now delivering parcels on a weekend to cope. Indeed, they've been delivering on weekends here in Victoria since, 
Oh, June last year. I just haven't stopped. Um, so that's cool. Oh, goodness me. We've got our first super chat of the day. Um, it's from Jim. Thank you so much, Jim, for your um, $2 uh, US saying g'day, Gavin and Kim. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it, mate. Um, so let's get back to the questions. And hopefully the curtain the light's gone off. Yes, it has. Uh, okay, let's... A lot of people having a bit of a chitty chat, but that's fantastic. Um, that's what we do here at the Curd Nerd community. Um, uh, here we go. Here's a question. Um, Kevin, what did ancient cheese makers use for rennet? Oh, I'll tell you what. If you want to learn about what ancient people made their did for their cheese, pop over to the Cheese History Channel. Uh, and uh, Julia, who's in the chat, runs it. Um, it says cheese history on her little moniker there. Um, but go and check out her videos. They are absolutely fantastic. And they talk about all of the, well, sorry, a lot of historical stuff on how cheese making began in the early days. And now she's moved on to doing the history of individual cheeses, different cheese types. In fact, she did a, a history of how mozzarella came to be. Um, the other day, and I really enjoyed that one. Um, but yeah, um, how the ancients uh, discovered cheese making and what types of rennet they used. So if you want to go and check out that channel, and Kim, if you can um, uh, uh, pop the link up to Julia's channel, if you can find it, just search Cheese History on Google, uh, and then, yeah, bingo, boingo, we'll add the link. But, uh, yeah, fantastic channel and really I couldn't recommend it highly enough. She should have so many more subscribers than she does and I try and promote it as much as I can. Thank you, Julia. I can see, see that in the chat there. Um, Asriel says, uh, unrelated to cheese, your eyes are pretty. Thank you, Asriel. Yes, I have a condition known as uh, homochromia iridium which means I have two different colored eyes. Uh, one is slightly brown and one is slightly green blue, if that makes sense. So yeah, two different colored eyes. I'm just unusual. Um, okay. So um, <laughs> somebody just said, somebody noticed that I had uh, heterochromia. I thought it was homochromia. Maybe it's heterochromia. Sorry. Yeah. Homo means one. All righty. Um, Oh, another super chat. Fantastic. Uh, what's the time? We haven't got much time to go. Uh, this is from uh, oh, Liana. Liana for a $5 super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, what happened to a number of the 70s and 80s episodes? Uh, I am watching from the beginning and have made it to 100. Uh, I think you mean the... Ask the cheese man. I thought you mean the, the decades there for a second. I said, yes, I was around them, but I wasn't making cheese then. Um, uh, I don't know. They should be there. Maybe they're not in the playlist. Maybe that's where I've made a mistake. Uh, but they're certainly on the channel. Um, I haven't deleted any of the live streams. Um, so maybe I'll go back and have a look. Um, but uh, yeah, they're probably just not in that uh, Ask the Cheese Man playlist. There's a little tick I've got to do in the uh, the video dashboard for each video to put it into that category. So sorry about that, but they're definitely on the channel. You may need to scroll back. Just go to all videos and scroll back in time and, and go and find them, Liana. But thank you for your super chat. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, back to some questions. Uh, lots of people here. Um, this one's from Fun Pants again. It says, I have a couple of cheeses, Howder and Havati, uh, that are bitter. There's a fair amount of mechanical holes, something is due to incorrect pressing. Are they sal salvageable? Should I age longer? Uh, yeah, there's a few things about bitterness. Uh, there's a couple of things that could be. So it could be too much rennet too much calcium chloride. Um, 
it could be not enough salt is the other issue so if it's not brined long enough uh, or your brine strength is not strong enough uh, bitterness tends to be the latter which is not enough salt uh, and the pepsins the yeah pepsins in the in the cheese uh, create this bitterness and if it's Oh, sorry. And the last thing is it could be too young. So undeveloped cheeses also um, do sometimes taste bitter. And the longer you age them, then that bitterness then goes away. So with the Gouda, you could probably get away with aging it longer. The Havarti, not so sure because it's a very moist cheese. doesn't really lend very well to being aged. So check your salt levels. Um, and with the the gouda then make sure it's longer so with uh, those styles of cheese it should be about two percent of salt per weight of curds so that's the rule of thumb for harder cheeses it's usually about 2.7 percent uh okay so try that out um addy says rennet uh question what are the pros and cons of single versus double versus triple there's none you just use less rennet uh, usually they're more expensive as they increase in strength as well. So there's no real benefit as far as I can tell. Okay. Um, Tim says, do you re-sterilize your mixing spoon when you need, need to wait a while between uses on the same cheese? No, I don't. I don't re-sterilize anything during the... I, re -steril, I sterilize it at the start of the cheese make. Um, it takes time for um, for bacteria and yeast to land on your utensils. So I just make sure that I put them, my whole sink area is sanitized when I start the cheese making process. So when I put the utensils on it, it's no big deal. So no, I don't re-sanitize anything. Never had any issues by not doing so. Um, uh, Julia's chimed in with uh, Kevin's question, says they use ground up, dried calf, lamb, kid stomach, fig sap, thistle sap, anything that contains rennet or chymosin or pepsin uh, are some extras there. So um, Heidi says, uh, I recommend Gavin's 165 millimeter basket with follower for anybody that uses two gallons of milk to make cheese. I've tried different sizes through other US companies, but none worked. His are perfect. Thank you so much, Heidi. Yes, and we do ship to the US and Canada, New Zealand. Oh, we used to last week uh, ship to Malaysia, but Australia Post have stopped shipping express there. So we've had to cease that. I think Singapore and oh, Japan, I think, might be the other country, but it's all listed on our website. So, uh, so yeah, very cool. Um, e where else? Uh, Robert says, um, I always enjoy hanging out with the cheese man. Thanks for having uh, these live streams. No problems at all, Robert. I do enjoy a good live stream. And I like having a good chitty chat with you guys as well. Uh, and girls, sorry, uh, lads and lasses. Um, uh, oh, so many. You've got so many fans here, um, Julia. Uh, Cheese History is a fun channel, indeed, and uh, agree, love Cheese History, indeed. I enjoy it as well. Um, uh, only a couple of questions to go. Do you ever try to invent new cheeses? If so, what's the process like? Ooh, good question. Um, yes, Poison Blade, I have made a few cheeses of my own. So Petite Blue was one that I came up with myself. Uh, I just experimented and uh, thought, well, what would what would taste nice would be a blue cheese that has the same paste consistency as a runny camembert. I thought, and then I thought, well, it doesn't necessarily have to have blue veins within it, but I want the paste to taste like blue cheese, and that's why I created uh, Petite Blue. So. I don't know if Kim's got time to pop up one last uh, link. That would be cool. Um, so Petite Blue is one of my creations. I think Gomi, um, sorry, Bloomy Go Blue is another one that I've come up with. And I think 
Uh, Farmhouse Cheddar Blue was another one. But, yeah, they're all variations on a theme. Anyway. Um, um, uh, Rev says, uh, Rave says, not a cheese question, but where did you get the subscriber counter behind you? Uh, it It's called La Metric. Um, and it's it's a clock, it's a radio, it's everything. Um, it's a very versatile tool. It's not cheap. It was about 250 Australian dollars, which blew my mind. I thought, well, will I ever get it? But yeah, I use it all the time. Uh, and you can actually control it from Spotify. So you can play music on your PC and it pumps it through the little speaker on the, uh, on the La Metric. So LA Metric. Uh, they're on Amazon. You can buy them on Amazon. If you want to go through my Amazon affiliate link, which should be my Amazon store in the description, that would be fantastic because I get a little bit of the commission uh, for that. Thanks, Rave. All right, Kim is... Um, do, 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 do. Kim is... Give me the wind-up. So, um, Mr. Bones Barbecue, sorry, I can't put um, email addresses into the chat. Um, YouTube won't let me. It keeps hiding it from the chat. So, sorry, Mr. Bones Barbecue. We can't put that up there. Um, Kim has given me the wound up. So, yes, you can support me over on um, Patreon. Uh, go to patreon.com, greening of Gavin. Uh, we've got a couple of... We've got a little friend who's just come to visit. Uh, Hamish. Uh, let me... Where's the other link? Uh, and uh, the merch store is cheesemantv.creator-spring.com or you can go use the merch shelf down below in YouTube. All right, hang on. Hamish, come here, buddy. Here he is. Oh, my little Thank boy. You, it's my little boy. There he is. Oh, he's so happy. Now, we gave him a haircut and uh, there'll be a vlog out soon, <laughs> uh, it's, which uh, we haven't quite finished him. Uh, we've had to buy some clippers. We, we gave him a trim with scissors. Didn't work quite well because all the groomers are shut here um due to lockdown so he was getting really furry um so yeah we had to give him a trim with some scissors lovely little boy um now there is another person oh, person uh friend i'd like to introduce to you oh isn't she cute this is bonnie so bonnie is um a west island terrier as well just like hamish and is uh, Hamish's half sister, so we got her from the same breeder. And Hamish is underneath here, trying to get to me. You can't see that he's down here. Um, but this is Bonnie, and she will. Oh, she, yeah, she loves me too, as you can see. So she will be appearing in some vlog videos and stuff. All right, you can go. There you go. Get down. See you later, doggos. So yes, so there are our lovely little uh doggos so oh now they're now they're fighting hey no fighting out get out goodness me um thanks for watching curd nerds yes like i said there'll be some more vlogs over on the vlog channel with bonnie and hamish and uh me and doing stuff um in our sustainable sort of lifestyle here um i've got the video bug again so sorry about that after um uh after Holly passed away, it really hit me. So I stopped making blog posts. So, uh, but now we've got Bonnie in our life. She's a, a, a joy, um, brought some joy back in our lives. They're lovely looking doggos. Okay. Yes. And uh, I think Manuel says we started early. No, uh, no, same time for me, mate. Daylight savings time. But anyway, um, thanks for all your questions. Without your questions, we wouldn't have a show. I really appreciate everybody turning up. How many people do we have online? We had 54 fantastic effort um and uh, a great audience for the cheese channel um what else oh that's about it um thank you so much everybody for uh, turning up and i appreciate you spending some time with me on your sunday morning or saturday afternoon it's been fabulous we will see you next week on um gavin weber's cheese channel see you later bye bye <laughs>